Hey there, I am Kelsey from PoofyCheeks.com where I share hundreds of free cut files that you can use for your Cricut, Silhouette, and even your X-Carve cutting machines. And today, I'm so excited to have you joining me. We are going to talk about sublimation. I got a sublimation printer from my husband for Christmas this year and I finally pulled it out of the box, set it up, got it all set up on my computer, and I wanna take you along as I sublimate the very first thing. So my husband got me the Sawgrass SG500 sublimation printer. Um, it came with inks and paper, and so that's what I'm gonna to use today, and I'm gonna have you join me on my computer screen, and you can just follow along. I'm starting out at sawgrassinc.com, the Sawgrass website, and from there we are going to click on Creative Studio. So at this point you would already want to have a design made. I'm actually using some design that I purchased off of creativemarket.com. So I don't have to design anything. I'm just going to upload the PNG file that I've purchased. You're going to sign in. If you haven't already made your account, you'll make one when you set up your Sawgrass printer. And then you're going to go to start creating. They have tons of different templates for sublimation products. And so since we're doing a tote bag, I'm just gonna search tote bag and try to find the one that is the closest to the tote bag I have. I purchased a 100% polyester tote bag off of jiffyshirts.com for today's tutorial and it's all white with white handles. It's almost like a canvas feeling tote bag. So this looks pretty similar to the one I have. There on the left hand side, you'll see a menu of different things. To upload your own images or PNGs, you're gonna click on galleries and then upload from your computer. So I am going to locate where the file is that I've purchased. And I purchased all these letters with different floral and eucalyptus and I'm gonna do the letter K for my name, Kelsey. So once it loads in, you're just gonna click it once and that will actually add it onto your project. And at that point, you can see the squares on each corner. You can size it by dragging those. And then on the right, it tells you what size your image is. So since I have eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper right now, I need to make sure my design fits an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Once you get it sized correctly, you're gonna click print on the top right and it's gonna load. This is where you can pick your materials. I'm gonna do polyester since it's a polyester bag. You can click the type of paper and just make sure everything is correct as far as your paper size, your printer. I actually have two printers set up so it's important that I make sure I'm selecting my sublimation printer versus my normal office printer. And then you're gonna hit print. This is actually gonna send your print to a queue and one thing I realize is that um, there's a program on your computer that downloads when you set your printer up and that does have to be open. Otherwise, you're gonna be sitting there waiting, waiting, waiting and nothing is going to print. So once it says that it is in the queue, make sure you have the Sawgrass Print Manager program open so that you can start the printing process. So I waited and waited wondering what was happening until I opened Print Manager and it just popped right up. So once it has queued, it's gonna take you to this print settings screen where again, you'll wanna make sure you're picking the correct paper, the tray source, um, make sure your print quality is high quality, you don't want it to be low quality, and that your substrate is polyester. I currently have my Sawgrass printer set up in my dining room. Um, my craft room just does not have the Wi-Fi. It's the opposite side of the house from where our Wi-Fi is. So. For now, it's set up on my dining room table and it is currently printing out our K with the beautiful eucalyptus. And there we go. So that was super quick and the colors do look muted and don't let that scare you because they are going to look muted. Um, I decided to print two so I could put one on each side of the bag so that no matter which way I hold it, you're gonna be able to see that K. Lucky for me, right as this was printing, Amazon dropped off two packages with supplies I needed to finish the whole sublimation process. So with sublimation paper, you do have to have a heat press and they recommend this heat tape. It withstands the heat press and it keeps your design 
in place so that you don't have any like they call it ghosting where your paper would move around and press like twice so you have a ghosted image so I got two rolls of that tape and I also got some of the Teflon paper which protects your heat press and the item that you are sublimating so it says here perfect for t-shirts heat presses and all sorts of stuff so I'm just gonna unwrap this real quick and then we are going to take it to the heat press the bag the sublimation transfer the Teflon paper and the tape and we're gonna see what happens the first thing you're gonna do is put a sheet of that Teflon paper down before you would put your bag or your item that you're going to sublimate. And don't worry, I'll be linking all of this stuff down below in the description. So if you wanna know where I got any of it from, I will be linking it. While you're at it, don't forget to give this a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. So I've put the bag on here upside down, which means I also need to put the sublimation upside down um, and you're going to put the printed side against your material. I just really use my fingers to line things up and make sure they're centered so I don't use a ruler. I know some people get really specific and use rulers but that's not me. I'm going to cut a few strips of this tape and put it on my piece of paper so that it stays in place on my bag while I'm pushing the heat press down and pulling it back up. This tape is specifically made to withstand the heat press. It's not super sticky, but it's sticky enough. And then once you're done, it doesn't leave any sticky residue or anything behind. So that's pretty great. Now I'm going to cover with a second sheet of the Teflon and I'm going to press it. Um, I looked this up and people were recommending 400 degrees for one minute. However, I will show you that this did not quite work for me. When the time was up, I raised my heat press, took off the Teflon, then took off that sheet of sublimation, and you can see where the color's still on there, but look how beautiful this bag is. That K almost looks like it is gold with all that color and the patina in there. So I was so, so thrilled with how it turned out. Now, I did have a few things. Um, number one, this little spot, it's almost like melted and I also had a little bit of discoloration around the edges of the bag but I think the worst part is this my bag melted together so I'm definitely gonna have to work on the pressing time and reevaluate that kind of do a little research but as far as seeing the image on the bag I was thrilled and I just wanted to show you up close how the sublimation looks on the fabric of the bag I know I messed it up but it still turned out really good as far as getting that sublimation into the fabric. I hope you'll join me as I continue to perfect my sublimation. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment below. Thanks. Bye.